Welcome back, Zero to 60, Brumacious, Matt McChesney. Matt, happy Monday. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Monday morning. Happy April Fool's. I'm not going to be doing any of that dumb shit on the show today, by the way, but happy April Fool's. Uh, that's good. I don't think we planned for April Fool's, but we did plan for the tournament and tournament discussion. That's a, a great segue to our uh, title sponsor of the show. Obviously, the tournament is here. Bet Online is your bracket headquarters for the season. And with the best bracket contest out there, odds, lines, and info on every game, every round, right up to the national championship. We're on our YA Final Four is just around the corner. You can access the mo most up to the minute wagering information anytime from your desktop or your mobile devices and even track your bracket real, real time all the way through the tournament. Head on over to Bet Online today, get in on all the action and remember to use our promo code BLEAV. That's believe for your 50% off welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, the game starts here. Listen, I don't know about your brackets, Matt. I haven't been asking you, but I might win both of them that I am in presently. Purdue has to get it done, and that's the only way that it happens. Uh, Zach Eady, obviously, really hard to guard, and he can't, you know, won't catch a foul or will catch a foul either way. I think he, I think he's probably not going to have a long uh, career in the NBA. I think that he will do well through this championship run, but I don't, I don't know if his game translates to the NBA. And that's the first question I wanted to ask you, what your thoughts were on that. I mean, the kid's seven, four, so he's getting on a roster. I mean, it's it, period. I mean, he, he has a good offensive game, but he struggles, holding, you know, dribbling the ball. And if you double team him or triple team him, he, he seems like he can hit the outlet pretty well. He's been doing well, you know, making sure that Purdue gets their threes up. We'll see how he does against a uh, big dude from NC State. <laughs> Nikola Jokic likes him a lot. And he's been balling. He's a huge center of gravity and, you know, looks like an offensive lineman out there playing center for NC State. So that'll be an interesting matchup. Um, the, the tourney was fun. You know, first weekend's always awesome. Kind of, you know, just watch the games and the, as they go into the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight. Um, yeah, but, you know, it's, it's always a, a good time. It, Makes me think if CU could have beaten Marquette, you know, they, they could have been in this position because NC State's an 11 seed, for God's sakes, and wasn't going to make the tournament, but they won the ACC. So, you know, it comes down to possessions and fouls and making your foul shots. And, you know, Edie came out after the game, what, yesterday, and, you know, dropped a couple curse words and, you know, talked about how people overlooked him. I don't know how you can overlook a seven foot four center, but, but okay. Uh, and, you know, the, obviously you see what his motivation is. And, of course, you know, people are calling him a crybaby and all this shit. Why? Because he's motivated by people's spite? Because he's motivated when people say you can't do something or him perceive that they fucked him over and that motivates him so he's a crybaby? Maybe just people out here in the world are bitches and they don't like seeing people succeed. So when he says that that's his motivation, all of a sudden he's a crybaby, huh? Yeah, it's funny coming from all the fuck boys on Twitter and, and social media that have the audacity to criticize the man in the arena. So, yeah, but, uh, no wonder he's motivated by everybody talking shit. All you motherfuckers do is talk shit. I hope Purdue wins it all. Uh, so are you predicting Purdue and whom then in the final? UConn. They've won 10 straight tournament games by double digits. They are rolling. They're national champions defending. Um. You know, I, do I think that UConn's got who? The final four. Who does UConn have on the other side of the bracket? I can't Alabama. remember. Alabama. Alabama's the highest scoring team in the SEC. Uh, but I don't think they're going to be able to run with UConn. UConn's real good. So I would I, I would anticipate Purdue and UConn in the final. Okay. UConn probably wins it there. And I, I don't know if that's just because I'm a pessimist, but UConn's been rolling. And I think – I just don't think NC State is going to stand in the way of Purdue. Not with the way that they've been playing, but defense is an entirely different part of the game. I don't, um, know, how you, I don't know how you guard that big some bitch in college basketball. You, are. So, you know, a lot of unhappy people are saying he gets every whistle. I don't I don't see that. Four. Well, I know, but that, I mean, Jokic doesn't get every whistle as a well, large center. Look at it like Shaq. Like, it, you have to go in there and beat the shit out of him to, to stop him. And he does get beat And he's still shit. got 40 and has had countless double-doubles. So... Like if you don't go foul him hard and you aren't trying to, you know, just beat the hell out of him in the post, then he's going to eat you alive. So, you know, like, of course he's going to get every call. Basketball is super soft anyway. You could fucking spit in someone's ear and it's a goddamn foul. So, 
in the in a soft game, of course he's going to get every foul. That's what it is. You know, that's one of the reasons why people don't like watching college basketball sometimes because everything is done at the foul line as you get into the fourth or in the the last ten minutes of the second half. So, you know, it, it, look, it is what it is. I'm going to watch the final four games. They're cool. Um, you know, make sure you go to bet online if you're going to do any of your betting. And I, I, if I were you, I'd be taking Purdue and UConn. Yeah, it seems like the safe bet. Although I am, a, I want to further elaborate just really quickly on the softness that is basketball. It's pretty high contact as it is. The flagrant fouls exist for a reason. Is it just because they're not allowed? You can get pretty messed up out on the court if you allow more contact than, than is allowed right now. Well, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm old school. I grew up in the 90s watching those games. And sometimes you would get an 89 to 84 game because they beat the hell out of each other. But there wasn't any free passes in the lane. And I, I'm of the I'm of the era where no blood, no foul. So, you know, I, I think that it's it's an unwinnable argument because the rules are what they are. And you know, I like to see points, but I also want to see defense. So it's kind of a conundrum. Okay, we've reached a conundrum point. Yep. Uh, UFL spring football's back. 23 former Broncos are playing in the UFL, including Cody Latimer, Marquette King, uh, short-term quarterback Jarrett Guarantano, I think was his name. Uh, either way, that's a large number of players formerly in the league now getting an additional shot in the UFL. I think that's my favorite part of spring football. With the merger, we've been talking about it since it happened, or at least since the rumors of it happening started. A lot of guys also lost their job, though, because they weren't able to get picked up by a team. Um, I don't. I didn't watch any of it, and I know that you maybe caught a little bit of it because football is still football. Uh, hopes that this league goes on longer than maybe three years tops. They're screwed. They're screwed. They won't have another season after this year. And I, I I hate to say that, but it's look, quarterback play in the National Football League is already super average. So when you're talking about there's three or four quarterbacks on everybody's roster here in the spring because everybody wants to play on Sundays in the fall, not in the spring, then you've got, you know, other than AJ McCarron asking to be released to go play for the Battle Hawks. I don't know who all the other guys are. And they, it really, I'm not saying it was bad football. It was football. I'll watch it. Uh, but I don't know how you're supposed to, and I said this today on Coach JB show. I don't know how you're supposed to compete with these, with the NFL until you start going after the players that they go after. The USFL back in the day, the first time around, they went after Reggie White and Herschel Walker and Jim Kelly and Steve Young and all these other guys and got them because they would pay them more than the NFL at that time. And, you know, you had Reggie White, the showboats, getting 20 sacks as a rookie, and Jim Kelly going for 5,000 yards when he was in Houston. And, like, you know, and then the league folded because they overextended themselves and tried to compete with the NFL and didn't work. What all these leagues forget is the NFL is tax exempt. They don't pay taxes. Well, the, the veteran minimum salary for one year is $870,000, which I don't think, a company of that size is ever going to be able to compete with. Well, the, you would think that if they could sell tickets and merchandise, they could get to that point. But that's a lot of shirts. All the all the people that are involved in this with the Rock and all their investors. If you want your league to be successful, you have to instead of Drake May going to the Commanders or the Patriots, Drake May should be going to the Brahmas and pay his ass like they're like pay him more than the Patriots and the fucking Commanders are going to pay him. And then he'll leave and he'll go play for the Brahmas, period. And that's the only way this is going to work. And that is not debatable because no one's going to games to watch offensive linemen play. No offense to me and every other offensive lineman out there. No one gives a shit. If you can't play from a skills position, if you can't complete the ball, if you can't run the ball, if you don't have highlight plays, no one's going to watch. No one watches bad football. With the already meager uh, rations for the NFL at the quarterback position, I just don't think there's enough talent to go around at that high of there's a level. Not. There's not. I mean, and it's not like it, we could sit here and debate about it, but there's no debate. It's just not going to happen. Those The, the quarterbacks in the UFL aren't good enough to play in the NFL as a third stringer or a practice squad guy. You know, I understand McCarron asked to get released and go back to the Battlehawks. He's the enigma, I guess. He could probably be on a roster. 
Everybody else, I don't, I don't know. They, if they could be on an NFL roster, they would be on an NFL roster. Fucking period. Nobody will go sign with the UFL, with the exception of maybe AJ McCarron, over the NFL. No way. It's not happening. Okay, so maybe the the and you're right. We're not debating anything. I guess I'm just curious as to where your head head mindset is. Um, rules are trickling down to the NFL, so it feels to me like a practice or a piloting program, which is at the end of the day should be funded by the NFL. And maybe that's the only way that this has a future is so that the continuation of technology resources, uh, pads, rules, kickoffs, returns, et cetera, uh, G League type stuff where you send players down instead of keeping them on your practice squad, you're extending your roster even more so. So I think that's honestly probably where this is headed, but and, I don't know I if agree. it's sustainable. I agree. Like I, I would like to see a league where you're pra your 15 practice squad guys in the spring instead of jerking off at Dove Valley and fucking t-shirts and trying to make the team when they're not going to. Because, I look, if I would have played when I played like now instead of when I played, I never would have made a roster. I never would have got my pension. I couldn't have because I never would have shown what the number one asset I bring is, physicality and being a prick. I can't do that in a fucking t-shirt. So I would prefer those guys to go, and, like those 15 players, allocate them to the UFL all over the league. And then you're mixing current NFL players that maybe played in games, but were on practice squads on and off. Allocate them to the UFL. It makes the fucking product better. Those guys get actual live game reps. Coaches can actually evaluate on them. And then the kids actually have an opportunity to make teams and excel. You know, so it, it's really, really hard for guys to do that these days, uh, especially if you get hurt. If you get hurt, you're screwed. Mm -hmm. Like there's no coming back from getting hurt anymore. So. You know, the, look, the UFL is entertaining because nothing else is on. Um, baseball is about to be on, and I guarantee you the UFL gets better fucking ratings than baseball. No one, I mean, no offense to everybody that likes baseball, but if I want to take a nap, I'll just put on a baseball game. Um, but, it, yeah, I mean, it, they, they have to compete for the players that are in the National Football League, and the only way they're going to do that is with deep pockets, and I don't know if that's feasible because of the – the amount of players like there's just so many guys i don't know if you can pay them all so hey everybody remember we're also on twitch hopefully this is running on twitch this morning i, I can't find the 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 link up here to switch over but please go subscribe on twitch as well uh and all the social media platforms uh the super chats are up here this morning if you want to get involved with that we appreciate everybody uh, getting involved with the comments and whatnot. I have to nerd out here in a moment, but I wanted you to say hello to this user just because I want you to say. What's up, dickhead? Thank you. Uh, the Rock is cooking the same thing that Russ Russell Wilson cooked in Denver. That's from Trigger Warning. That's fucked up. Uh, I don't appreciate it at all. But yeah, you're right. Um, I wanted to talk about. <laughs> I wanted to talk about The Rock a little bit just because, from a nerd standpoint of growing up, you were talking about the '90s nostalgia, Attitude Era wrestling. The Rock debuted as so much of a heel and right now he's on a comeback in a way in which he's the heel but in a really smart way and matt i know this is gonna go you don't care but <laughs> are we talking about wrestling we're gonna talk about the rock and his kind did you of just talk about are you just bringing up wrestling i'm talking about wrestling but i'm talking about primarily right now the rock was mentioned you can shake your head all you want it's, not, well, it's a form of entertainment um so with Chicago backhanding. Okay, well, I didn't no, know where we going. had to go. No, I don't want no, to. No, that's fine. Keep the fucking party going. Let's go. Just because I disagree with you doesn't mean that it's bad. Oh, though. not disagreeing with me. I'm just saying his rise, the stardom, the ability to come back as a heel and then be almost betrothed by it. He went off air uh, last week for one of the wrestling events, basically cussing out another wrestler, Cody Rhodes. I know everyone wants me to talk more in depth about it, but Isn't the idea it here. Fake? Okay, so the athleticism's not, but... No one's saying that is, but he didn't really beat up Cody Rhodes. That's fake. Yeah, no fucking well, shit. Well, that's my man. problem with it. Like, I under... Look, my cousin is Brody King. Okay, if you know who Brody King is, what is that? IFC Wrestling? Is that what it's called? On TNT? AEW. AEW. See, I don't even fucking know. No but, shit. But, I, like, I appreciate how athletic he is. I appreciate how big and fucking strong he is out there, but that... 
It's not real. No shit. Nobody said it was. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying it, it, it. He didn't really beat up Cody. The Rock fucking That's, slapped. You know what I? You chair. want to know what I was talking about when I started this conversation? Was the storyline and the emphasis on entertainment and how great it is to watch The Rock being a story career, being able to start multiple companies, and then to come back and strive for people to hate his presence and do it so well that people are talking about wrestling again. That's what I was talking about. Not whether or not wrestling was fucking fake, Matt. Well, I mean, I, I said it was fake and I'm standing by it. And look, do I think that The Rock is incredibly smart at how he plays the media and plays the wrestling community and plays the football community and plays the movie community? I mean, this guy has a fucking hand in everything. Personally, I think he should run for president at this point. With the two fucking jerk offs we got running for president now, he could probably do a better job. That's just my opinion. Uh, Tyler Riddle said The Rock is a hustler. I agree. Hustler. I agree with that too. Dante said Val Venus was his favorite wrestler. That's insane. Uh, that's not any, even the top 15. And then uh, John over on YouTube said, Brie, what would be a good wrestling name for Matt? LOL. Uh, I, that, I don't know. I think I have to answer that. Mile High Mario, our friend Mario Vitanzi called him the Mile High Mastodon uh, the other day. I think that one was pretty good. Yeah. Matt, what do you want? Like the 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 barehanded, uh, I don't know. The, the backhanded bandit? That's so stupid. Well, the That's you, corny. barehanded, backhanded, whatever. That's yes, kind of little. Brody King is really my cousin, yes. Corny. Isn't it? Big mate. You're corny. All right. If you have questions and comments and you want to talk about other stuff, please let me know. I am just going through my list of things because I prepared today. Tyler also said the rock and wrestling right now is the best thing happening. Matt's a hater. He's a little bit, but that's okay. It's just his what you think. I, I'm not a wrestling fan. I we know. am 42 years old, not 12. Go fucking put your singlet on and jerk yourself off. What do I care? It just absolutely just ridiculous. I'm moving on. The draft is this month. Any bigger Thank indication you, of what the Broncos are going to do this season? Uh, look, I I personally think that as we get closer to the draft here, it, we, we're trying to we're starting to see where these dominoes are going to fall when it comes to quarterbacks and whatnot. I really, 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 really don't want the Broncos to leverage their entire future again on another quarterback, especially a rookie now. So if they're really going to like trade up and try and you know, trade multiple first round picks for JJ McCarthy to get to four or five with the Chargers, so on and so forth. Why would the Chargers do that with an end division team? You know, it, it, on top of that, the Russell Wilson thing and going to Pittsburgh and looking like he's in a better situation there. Under Mike Tomlin with a really good defense that made they made the playoffs last year with just atrocious quarterback play. The Broncos could have done that too, but. Again, they weren't focused on making the playoffs. They were focused on how to get Russ off the field, which makes me wonder what their focus really is at Dove Valley UC Health Training Center in, in the long run. You know, is it just to, to have Sean Payton go out there and control everything, or are we trying to win football games? If I was a player on that team last year, I'd be super pissed off that we didn't try and actually make the playoffs. We were more concerned about saving money, and we have the richest ownership group in the history of sports. But we don't want to make the playoffs, but we want to save some fucking money. And let's cut Justin Simmons, too, to save some money. So there's nothing worse than being super uber rich and cheap. And that's what I think about the Broncos right now. They're, they're unveiling new uniforms. I'm sure they're going to look fucking terrible. I mean, just atrocious. And I hope I'm wrong. But I mean, if they have any, like, mountains on the shoulder or any of that stupid bullshit, I mean, it's a gimmick. And if the Broncos are going to turn into gimmick town, I'm not with it. So they need to draft the best player available at 12 and not a quarterback. They need to be absolutely terrible this year so they can get at the top of the draft to try and get a generational player that at that position for five years cheap, whether that's Beck, Gabriel, Shador Sanders, Quinn Ewers, whoever the fuck it is, that guy is at the top of the draft next year. He's not in the middle of the draft this year. And if they're going to just wager the entire future on a rookie, well, you know what? You better do a little bit better evaluation than you did on motherfucking Paxton Lynch and Drew Locke and all these other cats because this is a fact. The Denver Broncos in their entire history have never drafted a quarterback worth of shit. 
Well, and never. They, mm, never. They, they, I know, but they've also not done a really good job of trying to work with said quarterbacks that they've drafted. Well, the quarterbacks have to want to work, though, too. Paxton Lynch. Wants I'm to not even talking years. about Paxton Lynch. That's a joke. That is an honest to God joke. Jay Cutler was on at the fuck at fucking Trist every Thursday night drinking like fish. He wasn't getting ready for games on Sunday. Fucking Tim Tebow couldn't throw the ball 15 feet. He should have been playing fullback. Although that rocket to Demarius was pretty good. That's a little longer than 15 feet. And, I mean, Drew Locke, look, I'm sorry, but if you can't fucking identify an overfront and slide of protection, you deserve to get hit in the fucking teeth. You play quarterback in the National Football League. At some point, the franchise has got to do their jobs, yes, but the quarterbacks also have to actually want to play quarterback. I don't think these they, they draft guys that just want to put on a fucking uniform. I've heard that every mock-up fails to capture what's coming with the uniforms. I don't care what they they look like so much anymore because I think that it's just a it's an overdone uh, importance. But I think that Matt, you like oh, a lot of I the. Don't know about that. I think you like well, you like a lot of the old school uniforms that they've retired and they good. bring back for like throwback week. I'm a defensive lineman at heart. I have to look good to play good. I can't just go out like some sloppy fucking offensive lineman and not care. Well, I've heard the mountains are very. Um, Subtle, so it's probably going to be. God, fine. I really hope they don't do that. Jesus Christ, please don't do that. They have such a clean. Less is more when it comes to uniforms. Period. Less is more. The more gimmicks and bullshit you put on it, the the worse it fucking looks, and that's a fact. So they have the cleanest uniform in history if they just do it right. They can incorporate some of the you know the era where they won three Super Bowl. They could keep the stallion, whatever, but it just. Go back to the powder blue. Incorporate the orange more. Less is more. Fucking mountains on the shoulders. What are we gonna have a fucking Walmart greeter at the beginning at the, the goddamn turnstile to get in now? Maybe. Well, welcome to fucking Sports Authority and Walmart. It's and, not Sports uh, Authority. Uh, uh, fucking the fuck. What, uh, I know fucking six today. We've got a discount on uh, condoms. They sell condoms at that, the stadium. They might as well. What? Everyone's getting fucked watching that product. I, that was ridiculous. You set yourself up for that one, and I'm really upset that I let you get away Ding. with it. Fucked up, and uh, it's not. It's not. It's not Sports Authority Field. It hasn't been Sports Authority Field for a decade. What is it called now? It's M Empower Field. Oh, you know who else is called Empower Field? The Chiefs. We just call it Mile High. That's why we don't. Do oh my lord! I feel like I I can't win here. But you know who can win? You can't win Monday. My oh, Jesus. Do you want to read Mike's comments so you just keep talking all over me? Uh, hey, Mike, thank you for uh, contributing. We appreciate you, brother. You're always doing that for us. Uh, the Waltons did make billions by being generous. Yeah, they didn't make billions by being generous. Okay, but... but Business. But they have fucking billions now, and they own a professional sports franchise. It's the wrong time to be cheap. If you want to be cheap with shoes at Walmart, that's great. I'm not going there to buy shoes. They're cheap ass shoes. If I want to go buy some fucking toys that are going to break in five minutes for my kids, I'll go to Walmart. Of course, yeah, they've done a great job of making sure the shit they sell is cheap so they can sell a lot of it to stupid broke motherfuckers. The Broncos are not a cheap product. They've got more money than Creases. Use it for something other than a fucking scoreboard. <laughs> Gotta start somewhere. Also, turf. Replacing the turf multiple times. I think that's a win in my book. Tyler Riddle, $49.99. Bring back the Bronco and the D-Logo for Denver. We appreciate You're you. One, team. first and foremost, thank you for your uh, generous donation. It keeps me wanting to continue to do this show. Um, True. Because it's not for the LOLs. But. And I'm really fun to work with. I'm a fucking pleasure. <laughs> just the best. I'm so happy and like just easy to work with and shit. I get along with fucking everybody too, let me tell you. Gets along with me just fine. The D logo for Denver, I think, is a nostalgia piece that needs to stay in the past. And I've said this for a very long time oh, and it upsets a lot of people. It's sitting right behind me. I love it. I absolutely love the old it school. It needs to be back. Can I finish a thought? I don't know. Can you? Oh, I'm trying to. You talk right over me. So the idea and the emphasis here is that you bring the old school D back because it's great, right? It's hard to improve upon. But that's why things change. It's why they evolve and it's why 
why that remains the throwback logo for the Denver Broncos. I don't think it needs to come back. I do think it's clean though, but the horse is a little outdated too. And it looks kind of silly. Like it was made in, I don't know, the forties. We gotta, we gotta get over it. So uh, I do like the old school D. I think it should continue to show up on the helmets for the, the throwback because I like seeing it and I like buying it on merchandise, but I don't think it needs to be on the new uniforms. And I can honestly tell you right now that the new demon horse, the elongated Broncos head is what is going to remain. <laughs> Bring back the D. Pause, no Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. That's not funny. I just got an L co-host just vibe. Listen, I host a lot of other shows with a lot of different people. This is a completely different vibe. So because yeah, I don't prepare. Matt and I have an understanding. Talk. I come on here and I get to be just a fucking cunt if I want to be. Do whatever so. you want. Let's go. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I prefer that personally because it gives more fucking juice at the table to go argue with all you motherfuckers. We're so, on the same side, but why, we're also not. Why am I going to come on here and try to smile just because someone doesn't like my fucking vibe? Thanks. Yeah, dude, take your vibe, take what you think, roll it up in a ball, stick it up your ass. <laughs> That's what I think. Mike said this sounds exactly like my wife and I talking about stuff. This is exactly how stuff we talk to things. each other every single day specifically when we're fighting about dinner which will be in a couple of hours w co-host we change the minds listen anybody I don't else struggle with what do you want for dinner i don't care how about this nope <laughs> <laughs> i don't care either just fucking pick you're the one who's like i'm a meat and potatoes guy i am fucking steak until i die okay well i'm gonna get a smoothie and we're gonna deal with it all right everyone is here basically for the new conversation i'm gonna highlight tyler's comment again because it really made me happy where did it go let's find it again thank you your support means everything it's the whole reason why i want to log in every single day and yeah, that's right too. i don't Keep normally going, baby. i don't normally like to do that mike and tyler have been so uh instrumental in the vibes today whether they're l or w i'm telling you these vibes are about to go through the roof because the next 15 minutes we actually got some shit to talk about oh have i not been talking about shit this entire time just not cool shit fuck you so we've been talking about like regular shit but the next stuff is pretty cool all right. You can't even see my notes. How do you know? All right. I fucking know everything, Brie. Lil Wayne performing at the spring game. Tickets go on sale Wednesday. I'm going to be in line because I want those tickets to that lower bowl. $15, $25 a piece for club. Those are obviously going to go up. So you're going to get in as soon as possible. But Lil Tanucci performing once again. I know you love the star studded affair, but this one's pretty special. Yeah, that's pretty fucking cool. I can't wait to go to the spring game. I didn't go last year. Uh, I just watched it on TV this year. I mean, this is a way to definitely get me there. Um, look, it, it, it's the draw is insane in Boulder right now. Uh, two new coaches being, you know, uh, announced today as well. We'll get into that in a second. But just, bro, the fact that Little Wayne is so immersed in the program now, I don't see how that can be a bad thing. You know, the especially with all these kids and all the eyes on him and how he's, you know, he's him. I, I think it's, I think it's awesome. I mean, he's one of my favorite fucking you know, rappers ever in the, in the first place. He's an unbelievable MC. So I, uh, I'm with this bro. I think it's fucking sick. The, I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be like upset though. If, uh, I don't know, five finger death punch or white zombie or somebody their death tones like actually came out and performed, but I don't think that's no, right. that's I don't like think the, that's really going down the same road. It's the same conversation we have every year about the Super Bowl and the performances there. You're never gonna get anything that satisfies well, that because I'm it's sorry, too much but out there of, are big white guys who like angry music on the field. Yeah, I'm sitting across the table from someone, but I'm just saying you like it too. I don't you fucking love metal. What are you talking about? I'm just saying that it's not appropriate for the Super Bowl halftime. Oh, but fucking Snoop Dog and Dr. Dre and 50 Cent and then fuck it, throw Puff Daddy out there two years ago, right? I mean I'm I was jamming to to 50 Cent and yeah, I thought it was cool too. And Usher. Like there wasn't was anything cool. wrong with that. Like it it's awesome. really hard to dance to Dragula. I, I don't think that you're gonna be finding what <laughs> it's you not want. hard to hip toss a motherfucker though. 
All right, <laughs> new faces in town. Warren Seth, senior quality control analyst. Uh, how do we feel about the hire? How does the chat feel about the hire? I see some people already uh, pilfering through that they're excited. Uh, somebody's <laughs> never mind. Uh, how do you feel about Warren Sapp, senior quality control uh, analyst? I think it's awesome. I'm glad Warren's here. Um, it's never a bad thing to put a Hall of Famer on your staff. Um, this is my question, though, and this needs to be cut, Bishop and put online i wonder how many people in buffalo country and how many of you fake ass motherfucking colorado fans are going to go after coach sap for being on jason whitlock's show every single fucking day but i go on it once and i get persecuted and call a fucking traitor but now he's part of the team and on the fucking staff but yet he gets no beef I think maybe a whole bunch of you are full of shit. I think maybe a whole bunch of you have your head cemented in your motherfucking ass. That's what I think. Other than that, I think it's a great hire. And I, I really hope that because he's a quality control analyst, I don't know if he's going to be able to work with the kids um, and, and work with the players because you can only have 10 coaches on the field at a time. So, I, I mean, I don't know how they're going to swing that, but – uh uh, he didn't go there to make copies. He went there to improve the three technique play. And the three technique play was fucking terrible last year. Absolutely got awful. So, you know, if he can improve that, then I'm with it, bro. Because the guy who played three technique there, as the guy who played three technique there, it's really hard to watch people assault the B gap over and over and over again. And if he can improve that, then I'm with it. And honestly, I don't even know who the defensive line coach is, but it should be Warren Sapp. There you go. Um, Tyler Riddle said, I like SAP as an analyst and to give advice to the young cats out yeah, there. Yeah, but he's not giving advice. He can't be on the field. You well, only have 10 guys on the field coaching. So you, is he just going to sit in his office, watch tape, and talk to people about what they're doing? Like the beauty of Warren SAP is the ability to go out and work on the SAP counter, like miss the hand, roll around, grab. I, I'll do a video on it tomorrow when I get to the fucking lab. But like Mark Schlereth used to teach me the old like Warren Sapp OA, and it's a, a pass rush move that he invented. Like if if he's teaching that to Cooks and the rest of these cats up front, I'm with that. But if it's just him sitting in a room, well, what are we doing? He should be the defensive line coach. I mean, he's a first ballot Hall of Fame ass kicker. So that that's just my opinion. No, I, I think that that's a, a a move in the right direction. I, I think that that opens it up to do so. Uh, after the game says Sal Sansari is the DL coach. She's still recruiting or uh, recuperating from surgery. Um, I'm sorry. There was one other question I wanted to highlight here. Uh, oh, Hagman in uh, SAP. Isn't that the IMG coach that came over? Yes. Yeah, so the, he is the coach from IMG and he was there a couple of years ago. He, he was, I don't think he was Seton's coach or Breck's coach, Breck Cool J's one of my guys that's down there. Um, I look this entire, the, the entire IMG thing in Florida and down South, they don't have those around here. And it's, I got a guy who plays there and it's all football all the time. So, you know, the whole football first school, second thing, it's true at IMG. So when you, when you, they bring him in from IMG, I'm sure that it's, leadership and engagement and that's exactly what he's there to do help the kids become leaders engage in the community and figure out how to maximize nil and maximize social media and things of that nature so i like that one too i don't know as much about this gentleman as i do about born sap obviously but uh you know I, I think that the sap hiring is huge not only for the fact that he's in the room but it just is national news. I mean, Warren Sapp going to coach with Coach Prime, that's huge. It did just more eyes on the program. You know, that and Little Wayne performing and everything else that's going on. Uh, you know, when we interviewed Coach Prime, you can go back and watch it. It's on YouTube. He, we talked to him about, like, the, the, the spring game and everything that's going on there. And he told us there's some big shit rolling out or big stuff. He doesn't curse. Uh, big stuff rolling out and just wait. And he wasn't lying. That's for damn sure. We got a lot of engagement in here today in the comments. Remember, super chats are open. We really appreciate you guys. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tyler has another question, but it's going off topic. So we're going to divert just for a second. Off topic question. How do you feel about a national high school football playoff? So that way Max Preps doesn't gift schools a national championship. Um, National championships in high school. I mean, that's, I, I don't think, I don't see how you can do it because you can't play for it. And I don't like national championships that are given. Like when you hand a national championship to somebody based on votes, I'm not with that. But if they're going to play, I'd be cool with that. But I don't see logistically how it could get done. They just everybody meet in what Kansas City somewhere and just play for a month straight. I mean, that would be logistically, I don't think it could work out. Probably a nightmare. Uh, Dre was saying, is this outside of, uh, I can't scroll, outside of uh, SAP and the IMG guy. No, Dre, we were just talking about those two coaches. I was trying to to get some uh, of Matt's thoughts on those. Uh, I also wanted your thoughts on Sanders rolling out the Cyber Beast Cyber Truck that he did <laughs> in Boulder. This so Shador is the first guy in Colorado to have a Cyber Truck. Um, the first guy? Yeah, he's the first first Cyber Truck in Colorado is Shador's. Um, it's going to be rusty. I, I don't give a shit. You know, like it, it, it's a car. Good. Like uh, it's another electric shaver. I, I'm praying to God and every skinny punk pray to the God of skinny punks that all of this is backed up. That's all. And I'm, and I'm not, I'm not talking about on the field from a stats wise. He's going to tear it up. Yeah. He'll have a great year. I'm hoping that the other 99% of the team doesn't look at Shador and Travis and Seton and Dylan Edwards and these other guys. I hope they look at them and go, God, I want to get to this point where I can get a cyber truck and get all these endorsements and get all this money and fame and buy my mom a house and all this other shit. I hope I can get to that point rather than sitting in the room and going, why aren't I that guy? You're not that guy because you haven't gotten there yet. So they're, he, Shador's him. Travis Hunter's him. Seton's him. That's what happens. They get, this is what happens when you're him. You get shit like this. So, it, look, there's a lot of eyes and a lot of hate. And I'm, I, I just, I hope that it all, from a team perspective, like the rest of the team doesn't get jealous because, you know, it's just, it's, it's a trait that I don't think men should walk around with personally. So if you don't like the way somebody else looks, if you don't like their car, if you don't like their house, if you hate on them, you're a fucking punk. You should probably earn it and work a little bit harder and probably, and then you'll get one too. So I'm hoping that there's not a bunch of discontent and hate uh, because immediately when it was put out there, and I mean, the fucking hate poured in like crazy. Obviously. I mean, there's so many goddamn jealous haters in the world. It makes me want to throw up. I think that's the point that I wanted to touch on the most because I, it, it, it's shocking to me how enamored people are with obsessing over what other people are doing, uh, buying, spending their money on, putting their energy into when it's a lot of wasted energy to give a shit when anyone else is doing. So I think that the fact that we have to bring it up because it's a, it's a piece of news, like the first cyber beast truck is, is pretty neat, but, um, I just wanted to point it out that it seems really weird that we continue to have comments directly related to this from the super chat over on YouTube. Appreciate you, brother. FPSD, $5. Do you think Coach Prime could bring baseball to see you? That would be an amazing accomplishment. I'm just going to jump in real quick because I was just talking to someone yesterday about how crazy it is that people actually give a fuck about CU football on a very large scale. The difference and the, the change and the momentum that Coach Prime has created for all of CU and all of Boulder and all of the CU systems is insanity. And it goes a lot deeper than just uh, the sports go. So baseball, baseball would be amazing. Matt. Look, baseball in the state of Colorado is huge. There are, I went to Niwot and we had Matt Brown, Mike Moat, dudes going to the, to the Major League Baseball. And that is everywhere. So uh, the fact that Colorado, Colorado State don't have baseball teams is disgusting. So I personally think CU would really flourish as a baseball school. You could build a beautiful stadium. People will show up. As long as you don't approach it like the goddamn Rockies, then you should be good. Uh, and look, could Coach Prime have a hand in this? Absolutely. But it, I'm pretty sure they got rid of baseball because of Title IX, if that's even the thing still. 
Um, so I, I think they'd have to drop a couple, like a sport to add a sport or add another, like a female sport to so just add softball. I mean, I add softball and baseball and we're rolling. So I think, uh, that's a great idea and it might, you know, get a different kind of athlete in the room too, because there's a lot of two way football, baseball players that are really, really good. It is interesting, though, that it's not a bigger deal when a lot of the high schools in Colorado turn out a lot of talent that oftentimes heads to the MLB. So interesting that the state schools don't have the ability to do so. Um, but I'm looking for any other questions that anyone might have. We're probably going to jump up here in a second. But I did see that five-star quarterback Julian Lewis made a second visit to Colorado last week, met with Deion Sanders and Pat Shermer to discuss his future could potentially be a day one starter for the Buffaloes. Does that kind of fit in the timeline for Shador going into the draft next cycle? Kind of just want to hear your thoughts on that one. Um, look, the draft cycle next year with these cats, how, how there's going to be three, two, two of the sons and Travis Hunter will be the big names, right? That those will be the three coming out next year in the cycle. So Look, man, it, going if they were to you know, add a baseball team, if they were, I think Coach Sanders can get pretty much whatever he wants done up there. Don't, wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. Like whatever he wants to get done on campus these days, he's going to get done. Like he he said he wanted to coach a class or teach a class. Bam, the Coach Sanders fucking class is there. So whatever Coach Prime wants to get done in Boulder, he's going to get done. Period. Okay, I. I don't know if that answered my question about. Yeah, ask the question again. Uh, just Julian Lewis, the quarterback, making a visit to Colorado. So is he a two-way player? Is that what you're saying? Like, is he a baseball player as well? No, I was I was segueing to a completely different aspect of like uh, Shador being draftable in 2025. What does is the help? QB? No, what does the QB timeline look like for Colorado? Because well, they're they're going to be the looking for a, a, a fill-in. Is Coach Prime going to stay the coach in Boulder after Shador, Shiloh, and Travis leave? Mm -hmm. And I've heard a couple of different things. I heard on this show a couple months ago, Jeremy Bloom, the great Jeremy Bloom, say there's an extension on the table and he hasn't signed it. And then obviously Coach Prime and his team are watching because an hour later I got a DM from Coach Prime saying there's no extension on the table and I want to be here forever. So... You guys figure that out. I, I think that uh, I think that if he wants to keep the train rolling and he doesn't want the guys that he brought in to hit the transfer portal after he leaves because they're not here to go to Colorado, they're here to co play for Coach Prime. You know, yeah, of course he's got to go find the next guy after Shador, and it should be pretty easy when you've got Shador going at the top of the draft and throwing for as many yards as he did and touchdowns, even on a a team that, you know, with the exception of maybe 10 guys, just wasn't very good. So I think they've really improved a lot, uh, especially on the offensive and defensive lines. They got some good pass rushers in. Uh, and then, you know, the skill positions are fortified. They got dudes everywhere. So it's just a matter of that next quarterback, does he want to come play for Coach Prime? Does he believe that Coach Prime will stay here for a long time? You know, we, we remember last year we saw a bunch of guys decommit. You remember that? They went, there was like a string where we had two or three weeks where guys were decommitting right before signing day because they didn't think Coach Prime would be there for very long. Um, so that maybe I know that that's the way that people recruit against CU. I know that that's like the number one thing they do mm -hmm. is they, they, they don't recruit against CU and like we can beat them on the field. We can do like our facilities are better or whatever. They recruit against CU by going negative on Coach Prime and going negative on Shador and negative on all the shine. And they don't, you know, like they immediately revert to jealous bullshit. Like we've been talking all morning. Like it's it's not necessarily that they're saying Shador can't play or Coach Prime can't coach. It's, well, we don't get the same kind of shine. We don't have the national media in our backyard. We don't have Little Wayne performing. That's all gimmicks and jokes and Boulder. That's that's not where you want to go. You want to come to a real football school. That's the way these idiots like recruit against CU. And that it, it, that's a red flag for me if I'm a coach, a parent, or a kid. For the simple fact that if I sit down, so for example, I sit down with a coach from X university, he sits in my chair in my office. And the first thing he does is immediately go after my competition 
or start dog, dogging out coaches or dogging out his competition, I know that he's not really there to recruit. He's there to bitch. Mm-hmm. And if you give somebody a platform to complain, they will. Trust me, I know I do a podcast and all I do is bitch. So I just, I just think that you have to be really, really careful on how you're, who you're listening to and how it's being you know, presented to you. If there's a lot of vindiction and jealousy behind it, you, I wouldn't want to go play for that kind of guy. I want to play for the cat that goes, yeah, Coach Prime's first ball Hall of Famer. He's really got him working out there in Boulder. Man, they are really going to be good. We've got to get our shit together if we want to beat CU next year. That's a great program. But you know what? We also provide and offer a lot of good stuff, too. Come check us out. That's recruiting and being, like, being, you know, proud of what you're doing, not just going and hating on Coach Prime and his kids and everybody else involved because you can't do what they do. You know, like <laughs> – Eminem's got a great line in the in the the song Soldier that says, You motherfuckers could never do it like I could do it. Don't even try it. You look stupid. Do not pursue it. That's exactly what Coach Prime should write on the fucking door. I like that one. I like that piece. I also think that it's appropriate to notice that whenever anyone's talking about anything that's outside of their scope and means, it's usually because they are tremendously jealous. Very much so. Yeah. It's easy to talk shit about all the the flashy things that yeah. you get to see. Fucking A, because they ain't got them. And you don't have the means to get there. Exactly. All right. Ain't no cyber trucks in Lincoln. <laughs> like, subscribe, <laughs> leave a comment. If you, I see all of you watching here. We are live right now. If you want to get in any last minute uh, questions, you can do so. I don't know uh, before when I'll hit the end stream button, but I do just like the stream, please. It helps us out a lot. If you're not already subscribing, you're just sort of watching in the weeds. Quit being a fucking creeper and subscribe to the channel so that we can get you back <laughs> for the next time. Um, but yeah, really appreciate you all chiming in today and following yeah, us over there. Creeper. I mean, it's weird. Don't watch it and don't subscribe. That's like voyeuristic bullshit. At least follow us. So we and get check it. out Twitch too. We just got monetized on Twitch. We're really excited about it. We're, Twitch is going to have all of the workouts at the gym. We're going to be using that a lot moving forward. My man Randy and Bishop uh, really did a great job there. So I, I'm super excited about that, too, moving into this month. I, I'll tell you, I'll, uh, I, I'm really, really excited about the spring and moving into the summer here. We're going to be doing uh, some football camps with Coach Sanford here coming up. Mike and I are talking a day later about, you know, some destination camps here in the state of Colorado to help all the kids out and whatnot. So a lot of big things coming up here in the future. No, Tyler said, awesome show, Big Matt and Bree. Also, Ingleside High School down here in Texas That's appreciates right. you for, moting, for motivating us. I did a, did a couple of Cameo videos for T and, and his squad down there. So check us out on Cameo, too. If you Look, if you have any, you want me to pump your team up, you want me to get you out of bed and yell at you a little bit, or you want football breakdowns. I get, I don't know how many fucking messages I get a day on, can you give me a tip? Can you give me some advice on this? And I... The Joker always said, if you're good at something, never do it for free. And I abide by that. So if you want my help, go to Cameo, subscribe, and I'll get you whatever you want, however you want it, and from a football perspective on that app. But otherwise, I'm not doing shit for free now. No shit for free. Got right. it. That is the lesson of the day. Thanks. Go over there. Find him. Six Year Academy on all of the platforms. Mm -hmm. We just we can't change the handle. It would get lost. We got betting tips. Yeah, you can you know, ask us one. for betting tips. Did you play with Daniel Sanders? This is funny because the other day I was talking to you about the Girthy commercial, Brie. You remember this? Yeah. That's Girthy, Daniel Sanders. Oh. So I nicknamed <laughs> Daniel Sanders Girthy right when he walked in. Poor if Daniel. anybody can remember back in the day, those fucking like hot dog commercials or what, bratwurst, they're like, it's Girthy. That's what I named Girthy, Daniel Sanders. So when you see Dan, tell him Matt said hi, Girthy. And, and he still rolls with that nickname too, a 40 year old, the fuck. That's ridiculous. Um, hey, Girthy. Matt from Cap93, who's the best lineman in the draft, in your opinion, and why? Greg Nugent, Michigan, because he's one of my guys, and I'm super biased. KOA is interviewing him tonight. Yeah. so And he'll be on the show this week on Wednesday or Thursday. I can't remember. Ah, that's so exciting. All right. Steve G, any betting tips? Uh, bet against. Yeah, don't bet. Uh, everyone else. It just don't don't listen to us. <laughs> That's not There's true. You know who you should listen to though? You should go on over to Bet Online and look at all their odds and trends they because are way they predicting it than we are. Are gonna give you much better advice. Although I will say I give some pretty good uh pretty good betting advice. I mean, come on, I I I I know what I'm talking about. 
All right. Don't do, don't, don't ask me. Uh, Alec Baldwin said again, can you give me a tip? Pause. No diddy. All right. Nope. Two, uh, two, two of those comments. And now you've got a yellow flag already. Then Steve G. We got a yellow flag? In. No, I'm yellow flagging oh, you. Alec got, uh, Alec now uh, has a yellow flag. Yellow flag, Alec. Yeah. Fuck man. You're about to get red carded. Exactly. <laughs> yellow card, red card. And then you get blocked. No, I'm just kidding. No, we're not going to block you. I'm dog. just kidding. I'm not going to block you, dog. All right. Get out of here. I want to I go. Yeah, it's Monday. We're out. All right. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow? April Fool's Day. See you Wednesday? Peace. When are we back? Well, we'll be back Wednesday <laughs> okay. uh, with Greg Nugent, center from Michigan, uh, going into the draft, about to get drafted here, uh, middle of the month. It's going to be big time. Can't wait to uh, interview him on Wednesday and, uh, yeah, continue this, you know, whatever.